everybody and welcome to Tea Time for Lent episode six. So we are now at the end of the final week of Lent prior to Holy Week. So I thought that that would be our theme. Our Lenten theme for this week is Holy Week since we are about to begin in just a few days starting with Palm Sunday and just talk about experiences with Holy Week, the different liturgies, what we're planning on doing for this particular Holy Week, and, uh, you know, just kibitzing like we usually do. So we just wrapped up our uh, short series on the three pillars of Lent. And so now this week I thought, I love Holy Week. Um, and I thought that would just be a perfect topic because of the uh, proximity and time. But also this is a topic that's very dear to my heart because it's something that I did not learn to appreciate until I was um, uh, very much an adult, by which I mean a couple of years ago. So um, I thought we could just have a little bit of a uh, uh, chat about how that came to be, if it's similar in your own experience or if it's different. And, um, you know, maybe you can leave me some comments about uh, your uh, if you've grown up with going to Holy Week liturgies or if this is something that's new to you the way that it is to me. So that's our theme for this week. All right, so I'm a lifelong Catholic, um, as you may know from reading my blog. And so therefore, I grew up in a Catholic home. But for many years, until I was nearly a young adult, I guess I was a later teenager, my dad was not Catholic, my mom was. Um, but we went through our own you know, the uh, CCD classes and all that made our sacraments. Um, but it was just something that, until my dad was Catholic, it wasn't emphasized in our home as much, which is un understandable, just given the situation. So when I was growing up, obviously I remember Easter, you know, that was something where we, it was special and uh, we would go to Mass together. I'm thinking that my dad may have joined us on many of those Easter Sundays because I know he used to go with us for Christmas, even before he was Catholic. Uh, we'd have a special dinner, that type of thing. Um, and when I was growing up, I know in my religious ed classes, I do remember us doing special activities for Lent, giving things up for Lent, doing collections for Lent. So tying into our um, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving that we just spoke about in the previous three weeks. So all of those things were a part of my childhood experience with the faith, but we never went to any of the Triduum liturgies, not that I remember. And uh, so, you know, that could be because um, it was just something that my mom never did growing up. It could be because my dad wasn't Catholic, and so it just would have been, especially when we were younger, it would have been, I'm certain, a pretty big undertaking to have taken us, um, the three of us, to Mass for those liturgies if you don't have somebody else with you. So this was something that I didn't really think too much of until very recently. So sometime, Henry was already born. I don't remember if I had already had Anne or not, but so this is after I was married. Um, I decided to experiment with going to Good Friday, the service on Good Friday. Our parish has a uh, scripture service and veneration of the cross on Good Friday. They also have stations of the cross that is separate um, in the evening, but I, I went to the 3 p.m. service that I just described, and I really got a lot out of it oh, this is really nice. And I had known about Holy Thursday also having its own special liturgy, but I did not go to that for a number of years after because it was just, you know, Henry was little and it's in the evening. And so it was just, it was a conflict um, in the schedule. And I had not really experimented with the Easter Vigil much at all. So I had one experience with the Easter Vigil sometime. This was before I was married. I remember, um, we were visiting my sister, my older sister, for Easter, who lives, um, you know, a car ride away from where uh, my parents and I lived. We were staying with her for Easter. And so we decided to go to the Easter Vigil, not realizing because we had never experimented um, with these liturgies when I was growing up. Even my mom had never been to the Easter Vigil Mass. And so we thought, oh, we'll go, you know, in the evening, not realizing how much different it is from 
uh, Easter Sunday Mass and not realizing all of the things that went on during the Easter Vigil. So the lighting of the f the fire um, and uh, all of the sacraments, you know, people coming into the church and the nine readings. And so we were just unprepared for how long the liturgy was going to be. And I just remember us talking, I'm like, oh my gosh, we just were not expecting how different it was. And so after that, I did not go to the Easter Vigil. I always went to Mass on Easter Sunday because I thought, oh, it's so long. And it was just very hard for me to sit still because this was a really long Easter Vigil, okay? Now that I go to the Easter Vigil at my parish, which I'm about to tell you about, um, they do three of the nine readings. It is at the discretion of the pastor. And so our Easter Vigil is an hour and a half, maybe an hour 45, depending on how many people are coming into the church in a given year. This Mass was three hours, <laughs> and there's nothing wrong. It is beautiful. Um, it just, you need to be sort of ready for that, I think, um, when you go in. So I thought, I thought they were all that long. I didn't know. And so I thought, ah, I just, especially, you know, with kids, uh, I just didn't think that was going to be a fit. And I, we all go to Mass together on Easter Sunday, including Mike, and I knew that a three-hour Easter Vigil Mass was going to be probably something he wasn't really wanting to sign up for, and I can understand um, since he isn't a Catholic. So I didn't really try that again until recently. So a couple of years ago, I think maybe three years ago, I decided I wanted to try to go to the entire Triduum. Holy Week started to increase in meaning to me as I got older and my faith came to mean more and more to me and I understood more about the faith and I was then trying to instill it in my children. And so, um, you know, the kids would do a cute procession and mass on Palm Sunday and each day of Holy Week was just infused with meaning. I started to read the Magnificat devotionals and they would have special reflections for each day of Holy Week. And so, yeah, you know, I really want to make Holy Week end with just that poignant, um, just packed with all of the meaning that those days leading up to Easter really entail. So I went to the Holy Thursday, um, Mass of the Lord's Supper, and I was like, wow, this is beautiful. Again, very different from any other liturgy of the entire year. And what I didn't know is how that the, the liturgies were all connected. So I just learned about this about three years ago. So um, the Mass of the Lord's Supper on Holy Thursday obviously has the washing of the feet. I think we're all familiar with that. But you uh, you hear the bells rung for the first time since before Lent started during the uh, Gloria. And you haven't heard the Gloria song since before Lent began. And then there's a washing of the feet. And at the end, there's a procession with the Eucharist, the incense, and benediction. And the priest just leaves the sanctuary without the big recessional from church, the way that you would normally see on a Sunday. And the Eucharist is reserved, reserved in a side altar because that liturgy does not end until Easter. It's like, it's open. And so Jesus in the Eucharist is not in the tabernacle on Good Friday when you come into church. And this was just, I was just speechless. It was so beautiful. And so when you go on Good Friday, it's all dark and, um, it, the Eucharist isn't in the tabernacle. I was just, it, this has changed everything about the way that I see the Triduum and my faith. And then the Easter Vigil is like this, it's like this big pause, you know, from Good Friday until the Easter Vigil. The church is darkened, they light the, the flame um, so that everybody can light their candle from that blessed flame. And that liturgy has become my favorite of the entire year. Like I said, the way that my uh, parish does it isn't quite as long, so it makes it a little bit easier to sit through. Um, and it has just been an excellent experience. And Henry has come with me for um, the past couple of Easter vigils. And this year, Henry is serving as an altar server for the Easter vigil. I, I could cry. Um, this is so special to me. So he's also serving on Palm Sunday. Um, and I am so excited. So he's serving both at the beginning of Holy Week and at the end. So this is going to be a really, really special Holy Week. Those are my Holy Week experiences. I kind of want to keep talking, but I don't want to make this tea time any longer um, than our usual uh, 9 to 10 minute spell. So I'm going to leave off here. Let's pick up next week. That'll be my last tea time for the Lenten season. So let's talk a little bit more about the Easter Vigil um, and Easter Sunday uh, next Friday um, when we speak again. I'll talk to you then. Leave me your Holy Week experiences down below. Looking forward to seeing you next week. Bye.